Are you tired of cleaning up piles of sawdust from your table saw? Well, I have some shop-made solutions that'll make that a thing of the past. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of DP Shop Talk. Now today we're going to be taking a look at table saw dust collection upgrades. Now a lot of the newer table saw models have some really great built-in dust collection features, but if you're like me and you have an older saw that still works great and you don't want to have to upgrade to a new saw just to get those dust collection features, then what do you do? So I've come up with four different upgrades that I've done to my table saw to really improve the dust collection efficiency. So I'll go through each of the four and show you how they work. So the first and most basic upgrade to make is to add a dust hose to the bottom of the saw. Now in this case where mine is a contractor saw, I've added a plastic tray in the bottom with a four inch dust collection port built into it. And then I've added a quarter inch thick MDF filler at the front of the saw just to close in the gap that was left by the tray and then also taped it in place just to give a, a decent seal at the bottom. So that connects to a four inch uh, dust collection hose that goes to my main dust collector. So that's really where the starting point is for just about any saw is to add some dust collection to the bottom of it. So just the basic dust tray with the 4 inch dust port is what I used on the table saw for years and I was never happy with the collection efficiency. You'd always get dust coming out the back of the saw and the suction just never seemed very concentrated. So what I did is came up with a couple MDF panels, this quarter inch MDF, that will close in the back of the saw. So what they do is fit together and uh, create the two openings that you have to leave in the back for both the belt and the motor mount and they have rare earth magnets embedded in the back so that uh, they will just snap onto the saw. So they just slide in place one at a time from each side. The magnets just stick to the metal. And so they create a complete enclosure in the back. Now, one thing you need to be careful of is you need to leave enough height in this slot uh, for the belt when the, the uh, blade adjusts up and down, the motor will move up and down with that. So that's really a problem that you find in contractor style saws as well as portable saws because the back is usually wide open. So you need to close that in to concentrate the suction force that you're getting from the 4 inch hose below. So once you've closed in the back of the saw, it's time to turn your attention to the smaller openings and gaps around the rest of the saw. Now the goal here is to concentrate the suction force as much as possible from that bottom hose to uh, be coming through where the blade is, which is where the dust is created. So you don't want all these other openings to be having air drawn in through them and uh, losing that suction force at the blade. So what I've done is taken pieces of upholstery foam and just cut them a little oversized so that they friction fit in and it just fits in all the gaps and openings between the underside of, of the table and the top of the saw cabinet. And then I've also taken a piece and cut it to, uh, to fit in the blade tilt slot in the front so that just friction fits in as well so if I have to tilt the blade I can easily pull that out and then put it back in when I put the saw back to 90. So this really improves the, uh, the efficiency and controlling that suction from the hose uh, to one centralized location. So no matter how good your under table dust collection is, you still get dust spitting off the back of the blade. Now that's the dust that always ends up all over the front of you, on the floor in front of the saw, and in the air, and it just makes a mess. So to fix that problem, I've designed and built this overarm dust collector for my table saw. Now what it does is, is collects that dust that spits off the back of the blade and, uh, and really improves the collection efficiency. Now, as you can see, it doesn't function as a guard because the front of the blade is still exposed, but I'll show you why I did that in just a minute. Now, I designed this so that the hose is on the front of the collector, and the reason behind that is I want, as the dust spits off the back of the blade and that curvature of the blade, I want it to have a direct path into the dust hose. So rather than having it on the back and having the dust have to change directions, it's got a direct line right through. So it really improves the collection. 
So I told you I had a reason for keeping the front of the blade exposed, and here it is. I wanted it to work with my crosscut sled, since that's something that I use a lot in my shop. So by keeping the front of the blade exposed, it allows me to make a crosscut with the sled and have the blade come into the fence to complete the cut without the dust collection shroud interfering with it. So now I can make rip cuts and cross cuts and still have that overarm collection, which is what my goal was. So the shroud itself is easily adjustable up and down. You just loosen the two lock knobs and that will slide up and down so you can set it just above the thickness of the material that you're cutting. So the overarm collector has really brought a lot of extra dust collection efficiency to my saw. Like I said, it gets that, that dust that spits off the back of the blade, which has always been a nuisance for me. Now it doesn't make the, the table saw 100% dustless, but it brings it pretty close. So if you'd like to see how to build the overarm dust collector, let me know in the comments below. If I get enough interest, I'll make a second how-to video showing how to make all the different components of it and how it all goes together. So I hope you found this video helpful and that you're able to take something that you've learned and apply it to your own table saw to improve your own dust collection efficiency. If you found the video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And uh, like I mentioned, leave some comments below. You can also follow DP Shop Talk on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to get exclusive content and sneak peeks. You can find the links for all of those in the video description below or at the top of the main channel page. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.